Stand by for the most extraordinary chain of events ever swept up into high adventure. Hey, Larry, where's the forklift? Forklift! It's over there with the baggage loader. Airplane. Hello, and welcome to the Damien and Devlin Show, and this is our review of Airplane, the 1980 comedy directed by Abraham Zucker and Zucker. It stars Robert Hayes, Julie Haggerty, Robert Stack, Lloyd Bridges, and a host of other celebrities well-known back in the 60s and 70s, and 80s, I guess, too. Anyhow, uh, this is one of my all-time favorite comedies. In fact, it's probably one of the best comedies in my eyes, and it was kind of nice watching it. I, When I was a kid, I watched it over and over again. First, I saw it in the theaters a couple times, then when I got it on VHS, I watched it nonstop. It was a movie that every time I watched it, I found something else, because there wasn't movies like this all the time. Like, this was one of the, the first like this, and now... They've tried to do it, like, there's just so many, but they just don't do it the same way. And I'll talk about that a little later. Uh, but Airplane's one of my favorite movies, and it was kind of interesting, because I haven't seen it in a little while. So when we decided to watch it, I was intrigued to see if I'd still love it as much as I did, and I'm happy to say it still holds up pretty well. Sure, you're going to have things dated and stuff, but overall I was surprised how undated it was except for a couple of references but honestly I was quite pleased seeing it again and I laughed a lot did you laugh a lot I did laugh a lot <laughs> I had seen this movie before but it was a long time ago and all I can really remember from it was the fact that I did laugh when I originally saw it I actually wasn't looking forward to seeing it when I first saw it um, and it surprised me it actually surprised me it was actually really funny and I enjoyed it so when we talked about, you know, let's watch Airplane again, I got kind of excited because I remember laughing a lot, and I'm always down to laugh. And I don't think I laughed as much as I did when I was a kid, but it was still pretty funny, pretty funny of a movie. So I, I enjoyed uh, the, the jokes. I would agree some of the references in there were dated. I had no idea what they were about, so I'm glad. For once, you actually educated me. <laughs> For once. For once. <laughs> but overall, yeah, it was a pretty funny movie. Uh, airplane, as I said, it is, well, what I wanted to say about that was there was a couple moments that you must have forgot because you just, like, were shocked <laughs> by some of the things yeah. you were seeing. Uh, what I have to say about Airplane, if you've never seen it and you're planning to see it after our review, is this was made at a time when nowadays comedies are more gross out. Uh, and this gets away with a lot of stuff that you wouldn't get away with now. And that's kind of why I still like this movie, because this was made back at a time where politically correct was not the word, so they stick in lots of stuff. <laughs> but this movie was an international hit. People loved it. People considered it one of the best parodies of all time. I bet you if you ranked Ask People, it would still be up in the top 10 greatest comedies of all time. Uh, and it started the whole parody uh, uh, franchise and stuff like that. That led to them even doing Airplane 2, Top Secret, the Naked Gun series, Police Squad. Anyhow, uh, shall we get right into our positives? Yeah, by all means. Okay, um... Oh, you're going to go first? Oh, do you usually? Yeah, you, 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 you go first. I go first? No, you go first. I don't want to steal your thunder. It's fine. You're no. already going. Go well, ahead. Sorry, I'm just excited because, as I said, this is not only one of my favorite comedies. This is ranked as one of my favorite all-time movies. Um, number one, the reason why this kind of parody works is because they play this so serious. I was also brought up with the movies this parodies. Uh, there was a whole series of airport movies, and they also did other movies like uh, Poseidon Adventure, Towering Inferno. And this basically did this. This was the movie that started parodies. But they play this so serious. Like, they're doing goofy crap, but they're like, so like, this is me. And they hired a whole bunch of actors that were not 
they were serious actors to telling jokes and most i think all of them pretty much nail it there's only a couple times they get really zany but the humor like they just stay like they never break character they're just and, it, and if you watch those old serious movies it's it's spot on you almost think when you watch the original ones that you're expecting jokes and stuff because they did such a great job now when they do parody movies they don't do that they tend to just try to get as much pop culture references as they can and a lot of times they just get it from the trailers and don't even watch the movie this movie totally concentrates on what they're going to make fun of airport disaster films and we're going to throw the odd pop culture but the reason why airplane works is because they don't rely on that pop culture they stay with every stereotype like every stereotype people are getting sick there's all these things happening besides the plane about to crash there's a sick child on it there's family there's single people upset that they're single this is all stuff if you watch the actual drama movie that they do they just condense it and make it into one great movie so i love the script and i love that all three directors i love that what these movies do is they pack it full of so many jokes that if some of them fail it doesn't matter because they have another one like literally seconds later and even if there's nothing funny happening in the foreground you look behind them or in front of them and there's something maybe written on the wall there's something going on uh, i'm gonna give a plus to the politically uncorrectness of it because it was of its era and I think people still love these movies because we got away with so much and like they don't just like like if this was a movie just making fun of one kind of you know people or something but this is equal opportunity they they have nods to like Arabs Japanese natives and it's not all racist a lot of it is just goofy stuff in that I think a lot of times, most of the fun they're making of is just everybody in it. Uh, I think it's a great cast. Uh, as I said, they cast people, like, just like the old airport movies, they cast a cavalcade of stars. Now, maybe for Damien, he's like, I don't know who these people are. But even as I grew up, I knew Lloyd Bridges. He was in Sea Hunt. And, you know, most people know him as the dad of Jeff Bridges and Bo Bridges. But, you know, Robert Stack, he was a dramatic actor. But one of the shout outs I will give um, is Leslie Nielsen. Um, most people know him as a funny man from the Naked Gun movies, several parodies. Airplane was the first comedy movie as far as I know he did he was in like you go watch movies like Forbidden Planet he was like this I'm the serious man you know like he was the heartthrob and when he did Airplane that led to Naked Gun and Police Squad and he it changed his life Leslie Nielsen came to somebody who was just like a a random fact in trivial pursuit and he became a huge star because of these movies so we got to give airplane a nod to that uh, a lot of some of the lead actors didn't go on to much maybe a couple films here and there robert hayes i actually thought robert hayes is pretty likable in this role and uh i'll give a shout out to this even small i actually like airplane 2 the sequel just as much and we'll have to review that because you've never seen that i've never seen it a lot of people didn't like it because it's basically the same movie but some of the comedy is still brilliant in there so i think the hardest sequels to make are comedy sequels and the fact that they had one that succeeded was good uh elmer bernstein did the movie and he's known for doing very serious dramatic work they got him here they don't do a goofy thing. They actually try to do this serious thing. They just use the music in ridiculous times. Like every time they say something like, you know, it looks like we're going to die. Don't, don't, don't. And like lightning would always strike right at the pro. And you know what? It works. It works because, again, they're playing it dramatic, but it's also stupid. And I like that they, they found the crossing of that. And as I said, I could talk about this forever, but I love that there's just so much to look at in this movie. And as I said, I saw it three, four times. I was finding new stuff. 
Damien actually pointed to something. I have seen this movie probably like 15 times or so. And you actually pointed out something I never saw. What's that? When they're at the magazine rack, I did oh, not yeah. know. <laughs> like, I saw that they had uh, dirty <laughs> magazines, but I didn't realize there was a sign that actually said whacking material. And so here it is. Oh, wow. A movie that's almost 40 years old. I'm still finding stuff in it. That's brilliant to me. That's brilliant. Do you have any positives? I, for this I do have positives. I, I thought it was a pretty funny movie. Uh, some of the jokes just had me rolling because, like you said, like, your eyes too. Some of them were like so cheesy that they were so bad, but they were so funny at the same time. Like those kinds of jokes. Uh, but literally, you you said like I was so shocked at certain things that were happening that it just got a response from me so I'd laugh at it. And I, I am one to tend to laugh at things that shouldn't be funny, but overall this movie is pretty funny. And I, obviously as a comedy movie, it accomplishes its goal in being that. Uh, the fact that, so I do actually have a question before I go on. Sure. Airport movies? Airport, yeah. So like the, the movies focus on airplane disasters. Yeah, um, about the early 70s, there was a big hit movie called Airport. And it was huge and it led to like other disaster films but airport had like at least three sequels there was like airport 75 oh, airport 77 i remember gosh. there was airport 79 the concord wow yeah airport look into it it's uh, different i don't want to <laughs> you won't you know what these are better than those movies and they're hard to watch now because this movie ruined it for that well good because airport <laughs> movies just kind of baffled my mind when you're talking about it. i was like really uh but i do like a lot of the actors performance in this uh especially like you said leslie nielsen i i grew up with leslie nielsen as a comedic actor i never saw him in any i still have not seen him in any serious roles so that's all i know him for and he does fantastic job i think he's got some of the best lines in this movie of course the iconic uh, don't call me shirley like everybody I know, even my age, knows that line. They might not know where it came from, but they know that line. So there's that as well. Uh, the lead actor, what's his name? Robert Hayes. Robert Hayes. Yeah, I, I liked him. I love the fact that he's this like PTSD-stricken war veteran. <laughs> but we don't know what war he served in. And then you pointed out like they exp explicitly state there were no survivors except for him. In the war, yet we keep meeting yeah. people that also fought in the war. That that continues even more so in the second one. It's they just, just keep bringing more non-survivors, apparently. Crazy but. things like that just make me laugh. Uh, yeah, I love if you do the math. The footage they show is World War II. For the most but part. But that would be like 30 years later, yeah. and he looks like he's in his 30s. So. <laughs> so, yeah, mostly it's World War II footage. And then there's this one moment where he has like a mental breakdown. It's just World War One footage. And then the Wright brothers, like with their plane prototypes, and just hilarious, hilarious stuff. The plot's pretty easy to follow, so that was a plus to it too. I mean, it's a comedy movie. I'm not expecting a convoluted plot by any means, but the fact that they managed to shoehorn in so many jokes that made it work was definitely a bonus for me. Yeah, my I think the memory I'll take watching this with you is uh, you almost lost it when you saw the Japanese soldier. Okay, yeah, that, yeah. That, I won't say what happens, uh, but you were like, "Are they doing this? They they're yeah. not doing this." <laughs> so that actually it made me laugh, and like I said, I laugh at a lot of things that I shouldn't, and it all ties into the political incorrectness um, that does. So I'm going to start off with the negative. Okay, here. it yeah. does tie into my negatives. A lot of the jokes are so racist in a way uh, and they're so bad in a way that you're very much correct if i said even during watching this movie i was like if it was made today it would have been crucified it probably been banned like everybody would have had an opinion about it and like ah, rah, 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 which would have maybe made it even more popular since everybody would have had an opinion about it but it definitely would not have flown pun intended in this day and age. <laughs> Didn't so, even get that. So, so literally, literally, some of the jokes, I, the Japanese soldier, they're, I speak jive. Yeah. Like from oh, Mrs. Yeah. Brady right here. Mrs. Cleaver. Cleaver. <laughs> whatever, yes. whatever. The Brady Bunch is up there somewhere. Yes. <laughs> Again, references. So that's another negative I had. There's references and actors in there that I have no idea uh, who they are or what they've done before. 
um, Kareem Abdul Jab Jabbar, Jabbar yeah. who apparently was this famous basketball player in the seventies. Probably the most famous at the time. Yeah. So yeah, like this kid comes. Like in, I don't know sports, and I knew who he was. This kid comes into a cockpit. And starts going, hey, you look like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but he's not playing himself. And I'm just like, who the heck is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar? But I guess it makes sense. Like he was like the, I guess the Michael Jordan of the seventies. Yeah, yeah. Before Michael everybody Jordan, from was, my yeah. generation, like the nineties, knows who Michael Jordan is. So I guess I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, um, there was this one character that literally drove me nuts I know every who it is. time yeah. they were on the screen. Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> like. I thought the movie was hilarious, and there were random things that were happening sometimes, and it wouldn't elicit a response from me, like I wouldn't laugh, but literally Johnny, this character Johnny, he's this flamboyant, over-the-top guy in the air traffic control tower area, and oh my god, he almost ruined the movie for me at some, so many points, just, he says stupid things, he says, oh, yeah, I just don't even want to talk about him. Yeah. He's just so bad. I hate him. I hate everything about him. And so those are my negatives. Uh, I don't have a lot of negatives, but, you know, I will agree with Johnny. Um, I, I'll, I will honestly tell you, when this movie came out, a lot of people loved Johnny because he was just so crazy. I laughed a lot at Johnny, but when I rewatch it, it's really weird because he stands out. He is. He's like, there's the movie and then there's Johnny. Yeah, it's like everybody's playing it serious and they told him, you are the only person in this movie not to play it serious. When I was a kid, I kind of liked it, but he is distracting. So I will give you Johnny as a negative. Yeah, I can't stand it. Yeah. Uh, I want to give the politically incorrectness a negative. Uh, and I think now, if you did do a movie like this, I would totally get why you would clean up some of it. Uh, there clean were up. some scenes... Oh my god, I don't think they had included a lot of stuff. Some scenes, like, you know, like <laughs> the the one plane with the beard for... What is it with the airline? I think it was that, supposed to be, like, a, an airline from Israel. Yeah. And it had, like... The, a giant beard on it and stuff. A giant beard and the, the, the you know, hat. Stuff like that, but, you know... Some of the other stuff I I was okay with, um, but that's why I think people. I'm glad we still have these movies so we can go back for those. But if you are a new person who has never seen Airplane, be warned you are going to get your comfort zone moved. Now they do a lot of crappy stuff in new movies that are more gross out and stuff. This is I don't know it's. It's intellectual without being intellectual. There's fantastic there's... wordplay in this. Like, oh, yeah. Fantastic wordplay. Like they would say a sentence and then like, Yeah, like you got to you got to watch it. Then you get it. And that's another negative I'll give it and this what? is a positive negative. A this positive is a positive negative. negative. Uh well, first of all, they've ruined disaster films for me. Like cuz I can never watch an airport without thinking of the comedy. And that's what makes this such a brilliant movie. So it's a negative because it ruined stuff for me. But if I even saw one of those old things, I giggle now because I say, oh, yeah, that's kind of what Airplane did. And the wordplay is awesome, but it's become part of our culture. Like, you know, you know, I got to get them to a hospital. And then, you know, somebody says, what is it? And they say, you know, a building with patients and doctors. But that's not important now. <laughs> Stuff like that. You hear people saying that. And I that's have never heard oh, anybody say Oh, I it. do. And I'm never. not. No, now that I think of it, it's not a negative. It's fun when people pull out little puns like that. I, I thought it was clever. Like, every time it, it happened, is. I thought it was clever. So that's pretty yeah. much my negatives, because I, as I said, not only one of my favorite comedies, one of my all-time favorite movies, and I'm so happy it holds up. Shout out to the random naked woman that shows <laughs> up, by the way. Like, as a kid, one I like that. the best scenes in the movie. It was great. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, for no reason, they just show boobs. And I remember, even as a kid, I knew I had stirrings as a gay man, but I still enjoyed looking at a pair of naked breasts <laughs> and really i've said too much <laughs> yeah i'd like oh i'd love God. to see like a reunion movie of all these people come back and find out who those breasts belong to because I mean, you never saw shit. i'm gonna quote somebody in could the have movie. been the nun for all we know oh <laughs> that's politically incorrect i'm gonna oh, quote somebody in the movie though like great figure supple <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, it's awesome that he's quoting an old lady talking yeah, about one of the stewardesses. <laughs> Supple. Tight thighs. Uh, but anyways, uh, with regards to score, what I'd have to give this movie, just based off of the, the fact that I did laugh pretty much, I would say, still getting over that cough, still basically 75% of the movie I laughed at, I'd have to give this movie a four. I would give it a four. Really? That's that. high. I thought you'd be a little lower, no, but that's good. A four. Uh, the politically incorrectness, obviously, I, I laughed at some of it. Some of it struck me. I was like, oh my gosh, like that's rough. So I had to lower it down for that. And then, of course, Johnny. I, I would say the political incorrectness takes about, like, if one <laughs> one whole point. So from four to five, point five of that is the political incorrectness and the rest of it's Johnny. Like, the he literally ruins so much of it for me. And I, it pissed me off watching it. So four. I will give it a four. All right. Um, I think our people watching know me good enough. I've already said... No. It's going to be a four. I already said it's one of my all-time favorite movies. It's be so a ten. I am not I'll like it some ten. people who give their favorite movies four and a half. Because I'm fair and, and I'm unbiased. And five. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't We're surprise. going five. It's one of the best comedies. It still is. I know other people say it's Blazing Saddles. I think it's Airplane. I think it changed the genre. I think it changed comedy. And I just think it holds up. And if you're looking for a good laugh, watch this because, you know, and if you, used, you saw it a long time ago, rewatch it because it still holds up pretty good. I would agree with that. As always, let us know. Did you like Airplane? Have you even seen it? What did you think about it? And then make sure to subscribe so you're always following us on our next journey. You never know where we're going to head next. But thank you so much. We will see you next time. Airplane.